how you have this huge disparity between growth stocks and value stocks. And a lot has to do with what we've been talking about today, low interest rates, low, low interest rates, fuel growth. Um, and we've just seen this tremendous trajectory up in growth stocks over the last decade. It kind of reminds me of the 90s when growth stocks as well outperformed. And then we had the big tech bubble burst back in 2000. And I think you have the same opportunity right now where value stocks have lagged so much. They're so much cheaper than growth stocks right now. Um, we have a saying in America, you know, you want to you want to go and ski where the, or you want to skate where the puck's going to be. I think Wayne Gretzky said that, American hockey player. Um, same thing here as an investor. I think you really got to start to look to pick up some value in your portfolio just because valuations are so much cheaper. We talked about cash flow. Again, bonds are paying very, very little to nothing or negative yields if you get over to the global markets uh, right now. And you look at value stocks in America specifically, I mean, you're getting like 3%, 4% yields, and the dividends are going up. So I think there's tremendous value there. And I think when you're looking at your portfolio right now, you have to be smart and say, hey, I can't have all my money in growth right now. Would you be booking profits uh, in technology? I mean, we saw what happened with Netflix earnings and the impact on the stock. But on the flip side, you've had Microsoft coming out, all guns blazing, doing really well in this earnings quarter on every parameter. So what do you do? Because year to date, those gains are fairly hefty. Yes. I mean, growth stocks in general and valuations got a lot higher. I mean, Netflix is a perfect example of, I mean, the valuation was just outrageous, right? So anything mm. they do where they don't hit their numbers, you can see they're going to get punished really, really hard. So I think it's really smart that if you have a growth portfolio right now, take some profits, keep some money there. You know, we have a saying, the market can stay irrational longer than you can stay solvent. So I think it's smart <laughs> to keep some money in growth stocks, but you know, make sure you're diversifying and I'd say globally as well. The gold markets have underperformed here. Valuations are you know, much more attractive than they are in the U.S. You've yeah. got to make sure that you have money in all those different places. Okay, so, so if you are taking some profits um, right now, Ryan, as you've just been talking about, where would you putting, be putting those funds? I mean, surely there's not much point in, in leaving it in cash at the moment, is there? I mean, cash is trash. That's what we say here at uh, you know, 0.25%, I think, is the average rate you're getting on cash in the U.S., and it's worse overseas. Um, yeah, I think financials look great here. I mean, the numbers came in, obviously, fantastic to start off the earnings season. And if you look at the dividends that you're getting there, you're getting like 3%, 4% yields. Plus, mm. they're going to give like $190 billion back between stock buybacks, uh, you know, dividends out to shareholders. So you got this great irony right now where stocks are so rich with cash, Bonds are so meager with the cash that they're paying, yet you have investors selling out of uh, these value stocks. So I think you know, they look fantastic. I think the energy markets are starting to look very good here as a value play mm -hmm. as well. So there's a lot of places you can add money to the value side of your portfolio, and you're going to get paid really handsomely to do so.